Who's hungry out there for something delicious and healthy? So I am very excited that I have the honor to present in the Education Lounge, Charlene Badman. She is the chef and co-owner of the award-winning restaurant here in Scottsdale, F&B. She is co-chair of the Blue Watermelon Project, and she is the 2019 James Beard Award winner. That is amazing, right? Right here in Scottsdale. She is also known as the Veggie Whisperer for her ability to, to coax the best flavors out of locally grown vegetables. So with further ado, because I know you've been waiting for her to take the stage, Charlene Badman. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody can hear me? This is, okay, all right. We're doing a pretty simple recipe, um, and this recipe is actually from uh, Chef Shannon Reyna. Shannon is uh, part of our Blue Watermelon team. She is the food service manager at Salt River Schools. She prepares hundreds and hundreds of meals uh, for students uh, through the week and uh, such a wonderful lady. Um, this recipe is one that we did with our, our classes. Um, uh, like we mentioned, uh, I do a program called Blue Watermelon Project and we're in 30 schools. Two are in Tucson, four in um, Northern Arizona and the rest are here in the Phoenix area. Uh, and every month we give uh, students a recipe as well as a, a garden lesson uh, to plant uh, in this particular month it was October and they planted the watermelon radishes uh, and they're starting they're, they're coming up already they take about 60 days they'll be harvesting them pretty soon uh, they love the cold weather which is good since that happened um, but this is a, a salsa so pretty simple we have the uh, recipe for you if you'd like it and it's just like a it, it's listed it tells you what to put in there but take it as a as just kind of like a list of ingredients and then how you can adjust it I I love this recipe though because uh, it does not include tomatoes. Um, it is made with the watermelon radish, so this time of the year when tomatoes don't taste as, as delicious uh, and the, something like a watermelon radish does. I also love it because of the texture. It's nice and crunchy. Um, and, and then you can sub other things out. If you couldn't find a watermelon radish, but right now they're beautiful. These are from Bob McClendon. Picked them up at the farmer's market. Super beautiful. He'll have them with the greens, without. Um, these are already washed, ready to go. Uh, I did sub out in the recipe, it calls for a yellow onion. If you want a red onion, that's great. But right now we have these beautiful e toy onions, uh, which we grow, uh, they grow really well here. They, uh, the less water, the better. We plant these in August. We've done them with the students as well. Uh, when it's, it's so hot and then they just start popping up. They look like a, a green onion. They'll start to bulb a little bit at the bottom or like a shallot. Um, but I use that today with the taste test we're gonna give you to try so you can give it a taste. Um, cucumbers coming from Steadfast Farms, another farm. Uh, Eric uh, is out in Mesa, does beautiful, has beautiful that. Of course, we have great citrus coming in right now that is super delicious. Um, I almost brought a couple of grapefruits because I think grapefruit would be great with this as well. But just take the recipe as an outline and then make it at home and make it yours. Um, so real simple. Go ahead and just start cutting everything. Like we tell the, the students when we're working with them, because we work from, uh, with students from preschool uh, up until middle school and into high school, um, just to always be respectful of their knives. Uh, we use the claw technique. We always talk to them about making sure to use the claw, make sure to be mindful of what they're doing, um, to not point their knife to the sky, don't point it at your friends, it's not a finger. We're gonna start with 10 fingers, we're gonna end with 10 fingers. Um, um, I think we've only had like two cut fingers so far, so we're doing okay in the last uh, about uh, six, seven years. So what I love about this radish is that, and the, and the kids do too, is that it looks like a watermelon. And just slice a few of these. But it's hard to get students to really enjoy a, a radish because they have, they have a um, tendency to be spicy. They're like, it's spicy, it's hot. This one is a little bit more mild. 
Um, and also one of the reasons that Shannon decided to use radishes instead of tomato is because she wanted to do something that her mother would enjoy. And her mother is, has to have a low potassium diet and tomatoes would make it a little bit higher. This was something she could enjoy. This was a great substitution. And I think it shows you how you can be flexible with your recipes. Um, so you can cut the radish like, like this and then just cut them into little pieces and then you have it just like you were having a wedge of watermelon radish if you wanted to use it for your salsa like that. Um, for what I did last night, I just cut them into like you would uh, an onion or a tomato or any of those, but we immediately tell students to try to get to a flat surface and how they can instead of trying to cut something that's rolling around and they may end up cutting their fingers. So we'll cut it uh, on its side. And if it breaks or anything like that, it's perfectly fine that that happens. But you're going to take about, you know, it depends. I think the recipe says like one radish. And if the radish is this size, one radish is perfectly fine. Radish may be a little bit smaller. You might want to use two or three. So we'd cut it into nice little uh, chop. And you have this beautiful, beautiful, like pink that's right there that I really love. Um, for this, it doesn't really bleed out. And then we'll add that into, into our salsa, that base that we're doing. And we give students a smaller, definitely a smaller knife. It depends on the age. On Monday, we were uh, down in Tucson working with students, and they were second grade, so they're six, seven years old. We're giving them a much smaller knife. It's, it has a serrated edge, but still really working with them on knife skills and how they're able to just be mindful and take the time. A lot of times we'll, we'll cut maybe the radish in half or, or when we're cutting, say, cilantro, which is very perfumey, we'll ask them to, to smell it, to close their eyes and smell it and, and take a moment to, to really take that in. Uh, same thing with like the citrus. Oftentimes we'll give them a, a, a mandarin orange, like the side they always, you know, they refer to them as cuties, but we try to find them when they're uh, local here. But we'll give them one, we'll just start with like peeling and, and taking a moment to be mindful about, about what they're experiencing and, and, uh, and does, do they enjoy it. Um, every one will, every student will tell us that it's sour, it's sweet, it's both, it's, it's this or that, it's always something a little bit different. Um, cucumbers. These are really small. The seeds are perfectly fine to keep in. Again, I'm just taking it back to uh, having it be a flat surface and that it's not going around. This I don't think needs to be cut into half again, like sideways, so I think it's flat enough. Just some nice long pieces, keeping those thumbs back. And then about the same size as the watermelon radish. We add that in there. I almost do almost equal to this uh, amount of the watermelon radish, the cucumber, because uh, I like that kind of juiciness that it brings to, to the dish when it has it doesn't have that tomato, and the radish is obviously a little bit, um, a little bit drier. And then for the cilantro. Um, I started working for a chef in uh, high school in a program in Tucson, and she uh, had a southwestern restaurant. Her name was Donna Norton, and she did what is called the, uh, the haircut. So we just hold on to that and just kind of cut it down like that. The, the stems of cilantro are really usually pretty tender, except when maybe below that the, the um, rubber band. So I don't mind like putting them in there or just taking a moment to pick off just a few of them, but they're so tasty. And then you can save this for a marinade. Definitely shouldn't be wasted. Definitely can go into something else. Oftentimes we'll dice that up and use it as a garnish on top of a soup at the restaurant, but always good to, to keep it. And then I try not to chop it too fine and we just kind of keep rolling it and rolling it and we'll tell the students to kind of use again, keeping their thumb being mindful of their thumb, keeping a hold of what's going on, but just to kind of roll it. And I like our cilantro to be a little bit larger again, because the more you chop it, I think it loses its flavor. 
And I also think you could keep some of these ingredients larger if you wanted to make it more into a salad and less of a, a salsa. So we have these. And then our jalapeno. Um, when we did this with the students, the jalapenos were a little bit on the on the spicier side. So uh, we substituted out with for our smaller um, for our smaller uh, grades, our younger grades, we substituted poblanos. Found that to be a little bit less spicy. A poblano can be hot. Um, often I think it's just like you can smell it. You can smell it when you cut it. Also, if you want to use gloves, that's fine too. Um, we did that with the students. We made sure that they had gloves on. Whether or not you want to have the seeds and the membrane left in there is really up to you and what you enjoy and how spicy you want something because that's, that's where the heat is. But those can come out. I just use my knife. You can use a spoon. And it, you can leave a few in there if you want a little bit of spice to it. And then again, you have your flat surface. Cutting that much smaller than, this is a dice, so cutting it much smaller than our watermelon radish and our cucumber. But really the same sort of technique. And if you find that it's still a little bit larger, you can always just go back a couple of times and give it a, a chop through and keep it a little smaller. And you don't have to add it all either. This can be saved for something else. And just, I'm gonna add about half. I'll save this for something else this evening. And then these Etoy onions, went ahead and cleaned them up. These were uh, given to the indigenous uh, people that were here, we're talking about 1600s, by Spanish missionaries. So they have a really great history. They grow very well, like I said here. Super exciting for kids while it's so hot to get something in the ground and then see with our monsoons how quickly they come up and how fast they grow and that they're able to enjoy them. Uh, we had a chef that made a uh, just a simple rice with them, uh, and uh, it was really something that the students enjoyed, having a little bit of onion and, and some rice. We'll add that in. And then our limes. In order to get as much juice out as possible, we always tell the students to make sure to roll them, give them a really good roll, get that juice out of there, soften them up. And, and I also would tell them to take a minute, but to smell it, because it's like, I can see how shiny this is just from giving it a quick roll. And then their hands smell great, because they're usually like, my hands smell like onions, and I have to go wash them. I'm like, we're not washing until we're done. but. Um, <laughs> It instantly is a cleaner for them and they understand that. So just adding in our lime and that's how juicy this is just from giving it that roll. I like things very, very uh, tart myself. I love acid a lot. So um, when we do these with our students and if you did this say with um, your kids or your grandkids, um, we oftentimes will set things up for them as well um, so that they can make their own. Again, telling them about, hey, this is a recipe and there is some structure to it, but these are the ingredients, but maybe you like a little bit more onion than say your neighbor does, or you might like a little bit more heat than, we all like things a little bit differently. So oftentimes we'll let them decide what they wanna put in and they create their own recipe. A little bit of salt. And it doesn't take a lot of salt because I feel like whenever you're introducing acid into something, it can bring out those flavors that salt will as well. So that's another reason I like using acid, whether it's a vinegar, apple cider vinegar, or rice wine vinegar, um, or a citrus juice, because I find that I can use less salt in an ingredient, which is really important when we're working with, with our students. And that's it, it's pretty much, it's ready to go. That's not it. It's just really beautiful. I'll just I'll put it in 
I didn't use lemon. I, and again, I almost I almost bought a grapefruit. I had a farmer that just just sent some grapefruits this week, and they're super sweet. And you could use lemon, use lime, change it up. Um, if you don't like cilantro, use a different herb. I think I think because it has a cucumber in there, it could be mint. It could be dill. Those would be really different. I mean, it would just kind of maybe change the direction. You could serve it with a little bit of yogurt then. Be great. This is just a just a start and and then it allows you lots of ways to play. All right. Uh, there you go. Okay. Any other questions? Or do you want to start eating? Oh, we've already got the line. All right. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs>